Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today in the Energy Utilities Operating in the New Normal Fireside Chat Series. I'm excited to be here today to discuss with you um, our new normal and what it means uh, for the energy utilities sector. Today's discussion will be focused on the organization's business strategy as it relates to the energy transition and to sustainability in a post-COVID world. My name is James Forrest and uh, I lead the energy utilities sector in the UK and I also co-sponsor the, um, the, the global sector as well. I'm joined today by two of my colleagues, which I'll let them introduce themselves now. So I am Philippe Vier. I'm very happy to be with you. I am the Energy Utilities and Chemicals Global Sector Lead for Capgemini. I am Florent Andrillon. I'm leading Capgemini in vent consulting activities in the energy and utility sector in France. Thank you, Philippe and Florent. So um, solving global war the global warming problem is the most important thing for society in the 21st century. The capacity of the Earth's system to um, absorb greenhouse gases is exhausted and we need to reduce greenhouse emissions by zero, to zero by 2050. Uh, barring a breakthrough in carbon sequestration um, technologies, this requires an energy transition away from fossil fuels. It's the most important thing society faces today. So to start the discussion off, I thought I'd uh, start with what is the energy transition? What's, what's the energy transition all about? Well, James, energy transition is um, a movement that we've engaged with uh, several of our clients a couple of years ago, and that is now accelerating, which is how do we switch from uh, energy sources to less uh, carbon emission uh, em emitting sources. So it's how do we produce energy and power by burning less and, uh, if possible, not at all, any carbon while we produce it and while we consume energy. So this transition is about how do we turn off uh, coal plants, for instance, which is a movement which we have seen across the world. How do we increase the share of renewable uh, energy sources in the energy mix? And uh, how do we uh, accelerate the shift to uh, non-emitting uh, carbon uh, energy sources across the world, which is a global challenge. And that raises also another question when we talk about energy transition, which is also the transition to new economic model and new system model as the energy system needs to be evolved seriously to adapt to this new model. Thank you, Florent. And why is it important to our sector, the energy utilities players themselves? We should separate, uh, James and Florent, the utilities uh, for which this is core business since a while, growing renewables, uh, uh, providing uh, less carbonized uh, usages, uh, uh, growing energy efficiency. A lot of efforts have already been made, uh, notably in Europe. In fact, this is a strange mission statement, uh, helping your clients to buy less from you. Uh, and a little bit schizophrenic, but nothing is really new and it compensates uh, the demand increase. In oil and gas, it's a more newer topic. Uh, oil and gas players have more and more pressure from their stakeholders to be carbon neutral as soon as possible. On the other side, with the oil peak coming, uh, the major players have already announced their targets and their diversification uh, accelerating and taking energy transition as an opportunity to grow renewable storage, hydrogen, uh, immobility, and many other things. Thank you, Philippe. And um, how will the energy transition affect the profitability of, of organizations? The big shift that is happening uh, in this energy transition is, as Philippe states, um, energy transition sustainability, first step is to consume less energy. Uh, so that means for our energy utility clients, uh, selling less of their uh, product, of their energy to the customer. So that's the first, uh, first level of reduction of, of uh, their revenues. The second one is uh, switching to 
new energy sources, which may have a different profitability than the, than the former one, because they, they, in most cases, need to invest in new energy in uh, production sources, uh, while for a long time they were uh, uh, investing in long-term assets, longer-term assets, and they were probably uh, already uh, well uh, capitalized on those assets. So, and the third topic, which is uh, probably a jump in the unknown for many of the players, is that uh, within energy transition movement, there is also a, a, a jump into new business model, new economic model that are not yet all uh, completely mature. So there, most of our players are switching from a very well-known economic model, having large assets, install assets, uh, and centralized assets that produce power as so they distribute it along the network, to a model where they need to switch to more services, energy efficiency, uh, energy management, uh, carbon neutrality services, uh, and a less predictable uh, model uh, regarding uh, uh, demand management, for instance, or renewable, where depending on the country, uh, the profitability of the renewable activities has dropped uh, dramatically. So it's a really uh, a complete shake-up for many of the players, uh, with a big question also is at which speed uh, do we need to switch to this model and to this economics, uh, while some have jumped very rapidly and, uh, and, and sold their legacy, more carbon uh, intensive activities into neutral carbon activities. Other ones are, are, are trying to, 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 to manage a balance uh, between, I would say, older uh, type of assets and new assets to manage the shift to models. So that, that's uh, really the big challenge for our utility uh, clients today along with uh, probably uh, uh, much more willing stakeholders also to manage their own carbon footprint. And some of them are willing to uh, even manage their own energy production and demand. So uh, that's really a big shift to uh, uh, selling power up to selling uh, services and selling less, I would say. Thank you, Tom, very interesting. And how has the recent health emergency and the oil price crisis affected the, the plans for the energy transition and sustainability? First of all, um, this crisis has cut emissions and has cut energy demand uh, due to industrial plants closed and due to travel restrictions. The International Monetary Funds uh, predicts that this year we will decrease the emissions by 8 to 9 percent globally and even more in energy, less than 10%. But this is a conjunctural, not a structural effect. And we can live, uh, we are starting to live in the countries that have uh, ended uh, their lockdown, a uh, rebound. The other effect of the crisis is the fact that uh, during these periods of lockdown, less consumption on one side uh, and the sun and wind on the other side uh, have bring us to a situation which could have been expected by 2025 in terms of mix, more renewables in the mix, proving again, if necessary, that the grid adaptation, the smartness of the grid and the flexibility are crucial. In terms of renewables development, of course, 2020 will not be at the same level than last year because we have stopped some projects. But in fact, it's only a stop and go, and we will grow again and faster uh, the renewables development and the energy transition move. Uh, and also the fact that the recovery packages in Europe, uh, the Green Deal in North America, the Green Act, uh, will also bring the appropriate signal for more sustainability and energy transition acceleration. Thank you, Philippe. Um, for me, it's also interesting how the energy transition has affected the strategies of the energy utilities players. So a few years ago, we saw some new entrants really adopting uh, green energy as their primary offer to the market. Um, so in the UK, you've got some examples of um, Octopus and Bulb um, who, who basically set their stall out on that and have grown very significantly off the back of offering that. Um, and for example, Bulb got the award last year for yeah, the, 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 the most for renewables in the UK. 
But then we've seen that shift from the new entrants to actually all of the energy utilities players in Europe now have renewables um, offers. You know, they have um, some kind of renewable tariff that they can offer to the market and, and source renewable um, energy. So it's, there's been a big shift in, in terms of the strategy over the last three or four years, I would say. And I think the other area it's worth exploring is um, the intersect between the the energy transition strategy that the player is doing externally and also their internal efforts on CO2. And for me, it's pretty important if you're trying to offer uh, renewable tariffs to the market, you also need to be taking responsibility internally within your organization. So what I mean by that is that um, you know, a lot of players are now um, looking at electrifying their fleets. So in the UK, you've got both British Gas and SSE who have significant um, fleets, you know, vehicle fleets in their own right. Um, you know, of the order of, uh, I think British Gas got 15,000, they're sort of the third fleet in the UK. They've promised to electrify all of those vehicles by uh, 2030, well ahead of the the, the, um, the 2035 legal requirement to do that. So that's the sort of thing that I think uh, companies have been doing and should do more of. And, you know, some of the new entrants are also looking at doing some carbon offsetting schemes like um, planting trees, uh, which Optimus have been doing. So I think uh, companies need to be leaders in doing that, it, but those internal things as well as offering the external offers out to the market. Um, I guess another question is what organisations can do for a green recovery in a post-COVID world? What we saw uh, since, I would say, a couple of months is an, an acceleration of what you just mentioned, a switch to uh, to a renewable, a will to become a carbon neutral uh, with a strong acceleration also of, uh, for instance, on the customer, consumer side, the uh, RE100 uh, movement, who, which are the corporates who are willing to consume 100% of their electricity from renewable sources. So before the COVID, there was already a big movement toward, I would say, carbon neutrality. Uh, and what has probably accelerated a bit is that all the green recovery package, which are in discussion right now at the European Commission or in the different uh, member or state or, or in the UK, are uh, uh, outlining the need that those uh, recovery package are also encouraging uh, climate change and are also uh, uh, supporting and accelerating this transition to uh, to green uh, green energy and, and, and green, uh, uh, green measures. Uh, we are, we're having many discussions with uh, organization of our clients in the energy and utility sector, but also beyond that, because that's a, a topic uh, that is uh, really across the board in all the sector, in transportation, in buildings, in manufacturing, uh, in services, etc. Uh, and and uh, uh, we believe there is now a one, one in a lifetime uh, opportunity for many players to really switch and accelerate the move to to reach carbon neutrality before 2050. Uh, because it, I mean, beyond all the big statements that have been done, in reality, we need more action. And, and what players can do is that they can probably accelerate by scaling up technologies that we already know uh, are, are proven technologies that can reduce carbon emission. Uh, the difficulty we have is to scale those technologies across Europe uh, and probably more globally. So a lot of players are right now considering large investment to scale up really big uh, big technology projects across different countries uh, and also betting on uh, cost reduction of those technologies as we observed in the solar industry, in the PV solar industry uh, uh, since, uh, since a decade and that we are also observing in the battery storage uh, industry and system coupler is going on. So uh, the, the, the switch is probably also accelerating and many players are also accelerating both their acquisition and both their investment in new uh, green technology, because also there is a, an increasing pressure on the CO2 level requirements that the member state uh, will accept, that the uh, consumer will accept. Uh, we are seeing more and more companies who are uh, asking their provider to be below a certain level of CO2 emission in their activities because of their scope two and scope three uh, management. Uh, and last, 
movement which is accelerating is the cost of capital, uh, which is decreasing uh, when you are investing in, in uh, green technology, uh, which is also a good lever to accelerate this investment. So we are really uh, uh, now seeing this acceleration of uh, green technology investment. And, and, uh, and if we focus a bit on uh, what we talk a lot right now, which is the green hydrogen, for instance, which is a good vector uh, for uh, decarbonization, uh, there is a massive movement of investment which will happen in the next uh, couple of years across Europe huh, because there is a, a big opportunity for uh, European players to uh, become really world leaders, global leaders around this, uh, this technology. Uh, and, uh, and I think it will come also by coalition of actors Beyond pure energy and utilities player, and we are seeing a lot of consortium uh, taking part uh, with uh, players joining forces from different sectors. Interesting. And I guess the other question is, how do sector technologies play a part in the strategy towards the energy transition? Uh, first of all, the, the players, the operators of the sector uh, will be part of this game, uh, definitely, uh, growing uh, new careers like hydrogen uh, and enabling, uh, enabling the energy transition by scaling up the smart grids, the new infrastructure which are needed to host more and more renewables in the mix, to get uh, the power of storage, to bring uh, electrification of usages, to grow energy efficiency, and to make the energy convergence of all the networks and all the energies, the heat, cool, uh, electricity, gas, hydrogen, and others to come. Uh, this is definitely uh, a new play uh, and an imperative of this uh, grid at scale. I would like also to mention uh, the new business models that can be triggered by the technologies. Discussion we're having with many players around technologies are uh, uh, say twofold. One is really around the, the um, energy generation uh, technologies by themselves. Uh, and we are seeing, basically, if you talk to uh, uh, specialists from the uh, industry or many uh, uh, technologists or researchers, uh, the technology is, is already there. The issue is not so much just technology. It's, it's uh, scaling up and it's cost. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of debate around uh, what is the, the best technology which are available or the next uh, technologies that will come in a decade. Uh, so there, there's really a switch in uh, type of energy generation uh, technologies. The other topic which is uh, highly uh, debated also, uh, and in which there are probably a need also to invest and accelerate, it's uh, digital data and AI solutions, uh, which are really needed to manage those new sources of energy, those new uh, uh, sources of generation and consumption, which are distributed along the grid, or sometimes off-grid, and uh, with which you need to balance uh, production and demand in a very decentralized model uh, and you need to aggregate those multiple points of uh, demand and consumption uh, coming from a world where you have again uh, centralized assets with a one-way grid only uh, to a world where you have multiple assets very decentralized and all interconnected and to optimize and balance that uh, you will need digital technologies and you will need data and AI, real-time AI. Uh, and that's also uh, the kind of technology which enables this kind of sustainability. And that's for the production side. But if you look also at the energy efficiency side, to be able to consume less, you really need strong uh, data science capabilities to understand the processes uh, that you engage into when you're a B2B or manufacturing company and how you can optimize energy consumption of those processes. So again, that needs, that's a need of a lot of data, data sciences and analysis to be able to optimize the processes and switch the energy consumption, reduce the energy consumption and switch it to a moment where there is more renewable production available on the, on the grid and on the network. Agreed. I guess the other... The, uh, James, if I may, uh, if I may add the, the, the next move, uh, come from one single technology could it be the sector technology or the digital technology all are important the breakthrough 
on the markets will come from the combination. Uh, for example, if you were to grow an hybrid farm, a hybrid renewable farm, meaning uh, adding uh, wind, solar, storage, energy management, you have a part of sector technologies and a part of digital technology, same for smart grid. Uh, and this is very important to consider this combination. Yeah, I agree. I guess the other sector technology we haven't talked about is um, battery technology. That's hugely important for the future, um, both in mobility. Obviously, Tesla have been at the forefront of that. They're probably the leaders in the battery technology at the moment. Yeah, you know, they're working towards the million mile battery. But equally, that's important, obviously, for the for the networks as well. That would play an important role. So I think that's another area that's that's, that's pretty important. Um, so we touched a bit there on digital technologies. Um, what other digital technologies? So for me, um, I think, Florent, you mentioned um, AI is pretty important. So, you know, we've seen the ability to use machine learning to significantly reduce energy consumption, particularly in water companies. Uh, there's huge opportunities there. And we can see AI playing a big role in um, the energy transition um, in the combination that you talked about, Philippe. Yeah, in terms of digital technology, yeah, there, I mean, uh, of course, uh, AI, machine learning, I mean, there's a big uh, buzz around that, but I think it's more than a buzz. Uh, but we are also working uh, with several players, uh, utility, renewable, uh, uh, around uh, diff the different technologies such as uh, drone uh, usage, for instance, and to uh, reduce the cost of, uh, of uh, surveillance of uh, renewable uh, uh, wind farms or solar farms. Uh, we are also leveraging, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, IoT uh, to connect every piece uh, to the network. So that's probably also very important uh, technology, all the connecting technology. Uh, and 5G is also mentioned with uh, probably something to consider uh, because it's not always really clear the case between uh, uh, how much energy you can reduce thanks to connecting more by uh, leveraging 5G uh, compared to the balance of uh, additional energy to run the, the, the 5G network. So a lot of investment. And, and the last one, I would say, are, are uh, uh, probably uh, uh, augmented reality also, which we are seeing on field services activities mm -hmm. uh, to uh, help uh, all the operators on the, on the field to optimize uh, their turnaround, uh, uh, to really ensure uh, that they, they make the best in terms of maintenance uh, efforts. Uh, we are also, in terms of mobility, discussing a lot with um, um, uh, charging companies, for instance, for EV charging companies, uh, where, uh, in fact, one of the most important part of their activities is to us the best platform to manage and run uh, their, their batteries and, and their assets to ensure that the charging network is, uh, is on service, uh, is well served, well used, etc. So, uh, yeah, data and platform are, are really important. Philippe, I'm sure you will add something to that. No, 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 I can uh, only agree uh, and uh, repeat again that uh, the combination of all these technologies matter and breakthrough will commonly uh, for that. Thank you. Um, so should we move on to what the first steps our organisations can take to um, move to the new normal? Um, I don't know, Philippe, do you have views on that? Uh, of course. Uh, first of all, uh, the market will not be the same anymore. Uh, and you need to be, as a player, agile. Uh, there will be a price volatility. The, 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 the competition will be... Uh, transformed uh, in the market. And it's true for uh, the utilities players. Uh, it's also true for the oil and gas players. Uh, and when we speak of uh, uh, more competition, uh, that means also for the retail side of the market that uh, there will probably be uh, uh, with uh, the, the progress that can be made uh, on competitiveness an increase on in client churn offering to your customers uh, uh, the pro part of the progress that you are making. I think there is a two, uh, uh, two, two aspects uh, which which can be uh, discussed. Um, uh, one which is really accelerating the the switch to uh, climate neutrality uh, and to uh, green 
uh, green energy sources and, and green solution. Uh, we are seeing this switch uh, across the board uh, from, uh, from different players. Uh, but uh, and we are working also intensively with uh, large energy consumers. And they are asking us support uh, to help them reduce their carbon footprint. So they are now taking actively part uh, into that and, and expecting from their uh, energy and utility uh, providers uh, to switch from selling purely uh, only uh, utility to help them become partner in this carbon uh, reduction uh, transformation journey. Uh, so there is a, a big shift into that, uh, which is probably a very big challenge for a lot of our uh, energy and utility clients huh, because that means becoming a, uh, much more oriented towards selling less, towards selling services, towards understanding consumers, towards understanding their load curve, their, their own processes, industrial processes, and, and, and switching to uh, uh, say more uh, deeper understanding of the uh, client activities and carbon footprint. So they have to switch to uh, basically client carbon advisory and carbon services. Uh, and also ensuring that you still serve your customer, but with clean energy sources. So big movement and it's accelerating. So, uh, and I think a lot of companies won't wait 2050 to become carbon neutral. Uh, and they will turn to alternative because we are seeing also uh, a lot of new trends. Second thing uh, on which uh, they need to invest and to accelerate, uh, it's, uh, uh, data, uh, AI, and machine learning capabilities, as we stated, and that is really now becoming the, the backbone of this uh, energy transition. Uh, and uh, it's probably not a core skill of many of the uh, energy players, uh, but it's becoming essential to uh, the future of the network, to the future of energy. And uh, there is also a need uh, to increase the capabilities in, in those areas. Firstly, capitalize on the working from home that's been achieved during these COVID times. And this should provide a superb opportunity to reduce carbon um, by you know, getting people to work from home more and to tr fully track that. Um, the second thing I think people can do, organizations can do is to digitize as far as possible. So again, that saves journeys. So for example, remote inspection of assets is now much more possible, it saves journeys. Um, and I think that's something we should invest in. So moving to, to close, and thank you everybody for listening. Um, I would draw uh, two things out. Um, so the climate change is the most important thing um, affecting society today and energy transition is key to that. So I think the first thing is act now. It's very important that, that take a leadership now, step up uh, in their move towards the energy transition. And the second thing I would say is around resiliency. Obviously, a lot of companies are facing significant issues at the moment. So now is the time to invest in digital technologies and sector technologies to reduce CO2 and move towards the energy, energy transition. So thank you, uh, Philippe and Florent, for, for joining me. And thank you all for listening. And for those that are um, tuning in, uh, please stay connected with uh, capgemini.com. Um, until next time. <laughs>